What's up guys, it's Nelson here from Jolly Roger Airsoft and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the uh, plate carrier I used in most of my mainstream loadouts. This is the OE Tech MPS Combat Chest Armor and it's a great affordable lightweight piece of kit um, with plenty of molly space but pretty good maneuverability still. Body armor is one of the most important innovations in modern warfare. The first bulletproof vests appeared in the 1500s as guns became widespread. These armors were somewhat effective against the weapons of the time, but never became standard issue to infantry soldiers of the period. Armor pretty much died out until the late 1800s when efforts to create a bulletproof vest were revitalized. Often these suits were made of metal and very heavy, so throughout the World Wars, few soldiers wore ballistic protection except for their helmets. After World War II, the U.S. Army deployed several lighter composite plate carriers, but had limited effectiveness in Korea. Flak jackets were the most effective form of body armor during the time from World War II to Vietnam, as they were issued to air crews and helped protect their vital organs from shrapnel, from enemy air anti aircraft guns, or flak, hence the name. Still, these flak jackets offered little ballistic protection from bullets and did well against all kinds of shrapnel. The invention of Kevlar in the 70s revolutionized body armor. Kevlar is a synthetic material which has a high tensile strength to weight ratio, five times stronger than an equal weight of steel. Kevlar made modern lightweight plate carriers possible. Some of the shortcomings of Kevlar vests are blunt trauma injuries from large projectiles or high speed bullets, but it is still one of the most effective ballistic protectors in the world. The trade-off between a heavier but highly protective Kevlar vest, or the lighter Pasket personal armor system for ground troops, anti-fragmentation armor that offered less protection against bullets, created a controversy within the military. When the Pasket system was phased out in 2005, the military moved more towards a Kevlar based ballistic protection system. Today, both the Army and the Marine Corps issue Kevlar vests to their troops. The U.S. Army has used the Interceptor Body Armor, IBA, and has also issued the IOTV, the Improved Outer Tactical Vest, a smaller, lighter Molly system. The Marines also use a Kevlar vest, the Modular Tactical Vest, MTV. All standard issue U.S. military body armor is model Molly compatible, which stands for Modular Lightweight Load Carrying Equipment. The Molly system is based around PALs or pouch attachment ladder system, which is the actual webbings, and was first issued in 1997. Molly first saw service in the Middle East after 9-11, replacing the old Alice, all-purpose lightweight individual carrying equipment in the field. One common misconception about body armor is that it's bulletproof. This is a little misleading. Modern Kevlar armor is effective, but still, it can only be called bullet resistant, as there are still bullets that can penetrate it. All right. So we are back, and this is the OETEC MPS plate carrier stripped down with no pouches on it, no special equipment. This is how it comes out of the uh, out of the box from Airsoft GI. On the top here, this section, as you can see, it's kind of limited by these two straps, which uh, hold the back part onto the front parts. This is how the uh, two panels attach, pretty much. And so, yeah, you on the top, you have six molly across, three down. Wait, yeah. Six across, three down, I'm getting confused here. So you have enough space to mount an admin pouch or something up here, and then you have another small pouch on there, like I do if you've seen my stuff. That's what I do. I have a radio pouch and an admin pouch taking up most of it. On the front, you have 12 molly. Uh, you have 12 across and three down again, so there's enough to mount magazine pouches, dump pouches, holsters, all sorts of things, utility pouches, whatever you can need, you can put on here. Now, on the back, as you can see, it ends kind of high, but it's enough to uh, put on a backpack or anything. So, no problem, you could put on a backpack or a hydration carrier or whatever you want to do. On the back, you have five molly rows across, six down. So, it's enough space to put a backpack on. It might not be the most, but, you know, it, it gets the job done if you're going to put a backpack or hydration carrier on. So, um, yeah. Some special features, the one defining characteristic of the MPS style plate carriers is the fact that they have built in magazine pouches as you can see here on the front. There are six compartments here that can, OETEC claims can hold three magazines. Uh, if you probably stretched out real good it would be a, it's a real tight fit but you probably could fit three magazines in here but I wouldn't recommend it just for the ease of getting the mags out. I would hold two mag M4 magazines here and one note about these side ones. These are even harder to get two magazines in because when you strap it on, it kind of pulls these in with the rest of the vest, if that makes any sense. So 
basically I use these for utility because it doesn't have the full M4 uh, size and if you do you're going to have to loosen it up and adjust it and it's a pain to get it right. So I just use those as utility pouches and use these four. I can hold eight magazines on the, four, on the front. And I do like to have my magazines more center so I can uh, pull them out easier. On the left, you know, usually I carry my dump pouch on the front, my utility pouch in the center, right on the holster. I could change that up, do whatever, but that's the beauty of Molly. It's a system that's the biggest advantage of that system. Um, basically, oh, and here, on the front, top, I guess you would call it, you have a map pouch or some sort of utility pouch where you can put cell phone, wallet, keys, whatever you want to put in here. You can slide it in here in the front. It's like a map pouch. Uh, good for protecting your maps or money if you're uh, captured playing a scenario. You can protect it in there. Um, Velcroed in. Kind of tough to get off. But it gets the job done and it'll hold it in there. Probably not waterproof, so don't put anything really crazy in there. But, you know. It's a nice little utility pouch. Now, to the top straps, these shoulder uh, pads can be taken off very easily. They're hold, held on by Velcro strips, two of them. And usually what I do, I feed my uh, one-point sling through the back plate that I'll show you. But I feed it through the back and attach it under these uh, Velcro strips so that it takes the weight off my shoulders a little more and puts it more on my... It equally distributes the weight of my rifle when I have the sling. So that's what I do, I put it through here. These come off easily, you have to take these off to adjust the uh, straps and how high you want it up on you and everything. And yeah, so I'll show you adjustment later. But as you can see, the back can kind of ride up a little high on you. Like, I try to tighten it, but it still wants to go up. Because mostly I have the weight on the front right now. If I get a backpack, maybe that'll weight it out a little better and it'll be a little more even. And I'll be able to loosen these straps a little bit. But to get this plate, to where I want it to, I have to adjust these a lot. This is about as tight as it will go. And here on the back, it's really hard to, you can't adjust it on the fly. And if you like breathe out, it will pull the straps out and loosen it. So I've had to tie this shut so it doesn't actually do that and I can keep my plate carrier nice and tight on my body. It's still not exactly tight, but oh well, it works, it gets the job done. And yeah, it's a good lightweight, plate carrier that gives you a lot more maneuverability and mobility than some of those interceptor vests or anything, you know? So, this is a good vest, great vest for um, anything you could uh, possibly need, especially for beginner airsofters. It's a cheap vest, $55, and um, yeah, great value. So, we're going to go into more into the specifics of this vest after this quick break. Alright, so we're back and now I have the plate carrier off of my body. As you can tell, it's just a panel. This is what the inside looks like here. It's nice padded with the uh, soft plates. I put the cardboard on the outside so that it, I can still have some soft padding on the inside. But to access the plates, you have this Velcro panel on the front. It's the same on the back, exact same. But here you have the plate, same color, the coyote brown kind of deal. You can just pull it out, put it in. Good to go. As you can see, I have my cardboard plate in there as well, just to give it more of a harder feel, more plate carrier feel. On the back, as you can see, it also does this. This is where I feed my sling through. So as you can see, I have my sling, and I just stick it in here, like so, Velcro it down. This flap is actually really high, and I don't understand why because there's nothing up there to uh, hold it down. But yeah, this is how I would do my sling, and that didn't work. But this is how I would do my sling. Normally I would have it much better. Then you just feed it around, and now you have it ready to feed through these uh, shoulder loops. So to give you a closer view of the shoulder, here are the shoulder pads. You have two of these, two of these, Molly, these uh, Velcro tabs. Take these off. And the shoulder pad falls away. Here's your shoulder pad detached from the uh, vest. And here you have an elastic band to hold the uh, excess strap. Now, I have a lot of excess strap. So to take it all off, 
because I have, as I mentioned, I have it very tight because I'm a small, pretty skinny guy and it's not, I have a lot of weight on the front and I'm trying to keep the back down. But as you can see, a lot of strap here. So you just kind of fold it up and um, yeah, that's how you do it. You just fold it up and try to get in. But to adjust, now I'm gonna go over this painfully because I have this adjusted to a pretty good setting and to show you to adjust, I'm gonna unadjust it. So you're welcome guys. Coming down to it, if I can remember how to tighten it or loosen it, I guess I should say. Loosening, pull this back and pull this in. That's how you do it. So you pull this out, so you see, pull it out, and pull this strap in, and it's looser. Now to tighten, it's pretty much the exact opposite. To tighten the strap, I'll show you on this one, to tighten the strap, you have to basically push this one with the loop on it, the front thing. You just have to push it through, give it a little slack, pull it out, Tighten it a little. See how much I can tighten it here. I have to pull this tight. I can't really tighten it much because I have it very tight right now. In the back, to uh, tighten, you just tighten these things, pull the straps. There are two straps hanging loose, and you just have to tighten it, pull it shorter. You make these um, closer together, pull it to make them farther away. You feed it back through and pull it out. It's pretty standard for uh, adjusting. This is not rocket science right here. Now I will tell you that it is a bit of a pain when you have this thing fully loaded up and it's just too tight. It's just a little too tight. You can't quite get the buckles in. And that is really annoying because you have to take it all off, loosen it a little bit, and put it back on. And if you loosen it too much, it'll wobble, it'll uh, jump, bounce around and be really annoying. But if you tighten it, it can be a real pain and you have to get a friend to help you and it's just annoying. But whatever, I think that I'm that might happen with all plate carriers, but this one especially. Now these little things on the sides here, I have no idea what these do, but I assume it's for some sort of cummerbund or rigger's belt or anything like that. I don't know. Actually, maybe I could feed my holster through this and hold it up on my plate carrier. That's an idea, actually. Hmm, ideas. Happen on the spot, right? Here on the side you have a little mesh thing, not very elasticy, which I think if it was a little elasticy, it'd be nice. So. That's pretty much it for the uh, adjustment of the plate carrier. Just real quick, I'm going to show you how to uh, take it off. Here, you have these buckles. You can't see it because of the straps. But these buckles, you just undo the buckles, undo these snaps, and voila. A little bit. Almost. There you go. Front plate off. Now I just have my back plate on and yeah you have it fully stripped down and that is your OE Tech MPS plate carry thanks for watching Jolly Roger Airsoft stay tuned I'm gonna go over the rest of my pouches in another video so yeah thanks for watching peace out So, I'm back again, because I just figured out, just as I turned off the camera, I looked down at what I threw on the ground, and I realized that there are two things right here, exactly like these. So if I move this up to these, I might be able to solve a little bit of the uh, humpback problem that I have going on with this uh, back plate.